little ditty about Jack and Diane, two American kids growing up in the heartland. Jack is going to be up. Oh. Okay, you know who this is singing about Jack and Diane? I do not. Hmm. You've heard the song, though, yeah? I heard it, the jingle when we, a little giddy about giving stuff away. <laughs> That's the only thing you've heard. You've heard the song Jack and Diane, though, before. No, I haven't. Really? Sucking on a chili dog like Mary was at the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds. Oh, really yeah, can. that's sucking on a chili dog. That's Hell yeah. the best. You know, when you don't bite into it, you just suck on it? <laughs> Man. And that breading gets all soppy. Mm, and yeah. <laughs> this guy's done songs like Pink Houses and Hurt So Good and Small Town. I'm a fan. My wife's a big fan. She went to Indiana University, and so this guy was always... Doing shows in the quad, just the middle of the week. John Mellencamp is John the artist, Cougar. of course. Mellencamp. We hadn't been John Cougar Mellencamp a long, long time, but you're right. He was Johnny Coogs, and uh, then he was John Cougar Mellencamp, and then just uh, Johnny Mellencamp. We saw him here in Cleveland. We hadn't been here that long. I think the first year we were in Cleveland, we saw John Mellencamp at the House of Blues. He was here last Thursday. He's on oh. a tour, and he did uh, Playhouse Square. And um, he had to uh, yell at Clevelanders to shut the F up or he'd stop playing because people started yelling out. I'm always fascinated by people who, like, don't know what an artist is about, but they still like them. You know, like the people who complain that Rage Against the Machine is too political? Right. You know, if you're a Mellencamp fan, you know what Mellencamp's vibe is. Um, And I guess somebody got mad because he was... I don't know. He made some comment that was critical of the United States. That's not a wild thing for John Mellencamp to do. People think if you're a blue-collar artist, you're some right-wing nut job, and that's not really the case. So somebody yelled out, play the effing music or whatever, and he's like, shut the... I'm going to get off the goddamn stage if you guys don't shut up. If I wanted to play in this type of drunken environment, I'd play outside or I'd play in an arena, is what he said. You certainly don't think that when you get to Playhouse Square, the famed Playhouse Square in Cleveland, Ohio. Anyway, uh, this made a lot of news that John Mellencamp was uh, uh, yelling at the audience. I would have been yelling for him to sing the Sucking on a Chili Dog version of that song, where it, the lyrics are just sucking on a chili Where dog. Every, every word is yeah. sucking on a chili I dog. I just sent that to you because it's, it's top-level art. Yeah, I like Mellencamp. I'm just always, I always think it's funny. And by the way, you write, you like Red Hat Dopes. Like, I guess it's cool if you guys talk about what a hellscape America is. And, but if a guy like John Mellencamp gets up there and goes, you know, it'd be great if this country kind of focused more on taking care of people. Right. Isn't there whole All of a sudden you're a jackass. Yeah. Your whole thing is making America great again. But John Mellencamp's got some thoughts on that. And it's play the effing music. I mean, he got your money. So the joke's on you, but whatever. Jack and Diane, but most of the lyrics are sucking on a chili dog, is the song. Little ditty about Jack and Diane. Two American kids growing up in the heartland. Jackie's gonna be a football star. Diane's every Tom backseat of Jackie's car. Where's the sucking on a chili dog? It's coming. Chili dog, sucking on a chili dog. <laughs> sucking on a chili dog. Sucking on a chili dog. Chili dog. <laughs> sucking on a chili dog. This guy was really <laughs> bored, boy. He's in his closet. Looks like a nice closet, though. It's yeah. well lit. <laughs> well lit. Well, he's filming it. I hope so. Chili dog. Does he say that at some point in this song? I don't understand. Jack and Diane, the line is sucking on a chili dog outside the taste of freeze. Oh, oh, oh. He just turned it into nothing but oh, a dog. Sucking on a dog, sucking on a chili dog, <laughs> sucking on. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you this on the live stream. And then he goes to the lyrics yeah. on his screen, and it's yeah. just all the same lyrics. <laughs> no, that's he doesn't need them. Really. I mean, he'll remember, right? He has a girly room. 
Sucking on chili dog. Sucking on a dog. Sucking on a chili dog. Sucking on chili. Sucking on a dog. Sucking on a chili dog, sucking on chili dog. Yeah, so anyway, he's... Uh, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. Very, very... Uh, Tom I, McGovern is the guy there. I is. want a chili dog. I had two. Hmm? Did you suck on them? Just like that. Five o'clock. Damn! <laughs> of course, he had to respond to people. This is two years old. He had to respond to people who were telling him that he had stolen this bit from a performer named Clownvis who, if you're not familiar, it's a guy dressed as a clown who does Elvis. Bet you would have never cracked that code. And he had to say, I, I didn't even know who he was before I shared this video. Imagine somebody doing this before you. Two people. I ideas are just out there in the air, and it's unheard of these days for somebody to really have a genuinely original idea because there's so many of them just out there in the ether. Yeah, clown is going back ten years. Two people doing yes. this. I I didn't know that. I didn't either. I've never seen the clown visit. And this dude is like, I don't. Um... They did an interview together where they're trying to clear the air. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> this is a chili dog song. I hear it every goddamn time. It's been in my head all day long. Sucking on a chili dog. I was sucking on a chili dog. Dimes out back. All right. Well, there you go. There's mm. clown vis. Uh, but uh, that guy, poor, poor dude. Anyway, yeah. Uh, if you went to go see uh, John Mellencamp, he does not like people yelling out, I guess. He's there to play his music for you. Well, it was also a more like avant-garde type of performance, not just like a... Mellencamp like or Clownvis? Uh, Mellencamp this time. <laughs> Uh, it was it was supposed to be more like a storytelling kind of yes. thing. It wasn't just, hey, I'm going to play these hit songs. Right. There's like a whole yeah. massive acoustic portion mm -hmm. in the middle of the show. Mellencraft's great live, man. I mean, if, you, um, uh, if you're a fan of his music, obviously, and some people are kind of agnostic about him, but I think he's great. But he's one of those guys I, I will not be surprised when he goes, I'm not touring anymore. I'm not going out anymore. I, I can't believe he still goes out. I don't know if he needs the money. He can't possibly need the money. I don't know. Does John Mellencamp uh, tour with <laughs> Bruce Springsteen? I did call him John Mellencamp. <laughs> don't did. think I didn't mean to, all right? That was a test, and you passed, Mary. Okay. That was a test. John Kruger Mellencamp. The John <laughs> Kroller Mellencamp <laughs> and Bruce Springsteen show is uh, one to look forward to. So he yells at the one guy. And then a woman yelled his name at him, and he said, what did I just effing say but thank you? He launched his live and in-person tour. That's when you're tired of naming tours. <laughs> Which is your call, live and in-person? Oh. And he's almost done. He'll wrap up June 24th in South Bend, Indiana. He's dropping his 25th album this Friday. My goodness. Orpheus Descending is the name of the album. He's 71. And he has songs that address gun violence and the homelessness crisis. And apparently people in the audience in Cleveland didn't care for that so much. What? This guy doesn't want kids getting murdered. Uh, just play the songs. I'm going to. This one is about an end to gun violence. Not that one. Not that one. Play <laughs> something else. Okay, how about, the, the, chili dog how about the Eyes of Portland? It's about uh, addressing the homelessness crisis. I mean, these are things that singer-songwriters would write about, obviously. Anyone of any stripe would write songs about those kinds of things. Cleveland, how Ohio, come, though, boy. How come it's always singer-songwriters and never songwriter-singers? Well, because I think if you're a songwriter, you also want to be... I don't know. Isn't the cadence better? Don't you write I'm the songwriter? Song writer, you, huh? you write the song first. You don't sing it first. No, you sing it first. You songwriter first. And then you sing it. You go... And then you go in after, and you were like, "What would fit into those notes?" Little ditty by Jack and <laughs> Little ditty. <laughs> Alan Mellencamp played a half-hour black and white movie. That's why the crowd was asking for music. <laughs> well, yeah, but you kind of yeah, it's weird, man. I mean, um, I'm of the mind that when you pay a 
money for a ticket to see an artist. You take what they give you. And you might walk away going, I didn't care for that. Like a restaurant. You know, you go to a restaurant and everybody tells you you got to go. You go, maybe you got them on a bad night. Maybe they just stink. You go, okay, well, I'm not going to go back there again. Or maybe I'll give them a second chance. How many chances do you give a restaurant, by the way? Three. Three chances? Yeah. So no. standard three strikes. Yeah. I mean, first, it's fair. First but- time might be trash. Be like, okay, I caught him on an off night. Second time, I'm like, all right, I don't think I'm going to come back, but I probably might go back a third time. Mm-hmm. So it's a t- so wait. So it's if a it- toss up between two and three. So if it stinks twice in a row, you'll give him a third. I thought you meant if one was good, one was bad, you needed a tiebreaker. No, because yeah, so if you go, if it's bad two it, times in a row. I'm not going. Back I'm not going back time. a third. No, I gave. So there was a restaurant, um, a pizza place actually that I went to the first time. Brian took me there on a date, and I was like, "This is the worst pizza I've ever had in my life." And then I was like, "All right, maybe I caught him on a bad night." They were close to where my apartment was. I went back, still trash. I'm like, this is really, really but bad. But here's the thing. And then someone gave me a gift card, which is why I went back the third time, because I was like, and then the oh, third yeah. time I used the gift card, yeah. ate one piece, and was so mad. that <laughs> I was like, I don't even like this when it's yeah, free. But, but pizza, like, that's how they make pizza. It's not going to, ch- that's not going to change. But if you go to a place and you go, oh, the fish tonight wasn't that great, you go, okay, well, maybe they just had a weird night with fish. Yeah. But pizza, that's how they make it. If it sucks, it's it's going to suck every time. It's the only place I've ever eaten pizza at where I was like, this is horrible pizza. And I love, love pizza. But like a regular restaurant, like, all right, maybe I didn't order the right thing. Right. You know, I'll go back again. Right. But yeah, you're right. If it sucks twice, then I'm like, all right. And also because, also if it's, if it's expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've been there. And obviously that's a sliding scale. My but. sister and I, I took her out for her birthday and we went to a place. The shared we shared a couple like small plate appetizers. I think we each got we got like three to share and they were killer. They were the apps were amazing. Both of us got our entrees and we were super underwhelmed. We were like, How were the apps so good? And then the entrees were like lackluster. And we talked about it and I was like, if I go back there again, it would just be to like order a couple appetizers See, and share them. It's not even the food quality could be great with me at a place, but if the portion sizes are off, that w- that's what really sets me off. Like, it pisses me. Like, because if it's expensive and then you get, like, a little plate of, like, something and it doesn't, like, fill you up for the price, I'm like, it, it was great, but I'm not going to come back because I feel like I'm not getting my money's worth. I was reading about how, and this was a, uh, it was a creation of the pandemic, really, but... People in restaurants who go to restaurants, restaurants are finding out, hate QR code menus. This was a, a COVID thing since they didn't want people physically touching their menus, right? Remember back at the very beginning of yes. the thing? We're like, we can't touch anything and we have to spray our groceries when nobody knew what was going on. But people really don't like QR code menus. And so a lot of restaurants are getting rid of them. My, I don't mind them. It's fine with me. It's just I'm amazed at how many businesses aren't. They're not optimized for mobile. Yeah. Everything you're doing is on your phone. And you'll go to the, you'll scan their code, and then you're like squinching the, it's like a, just a, yeah, a the, the it's like a desktop. Around yes. It. I'm like, guys, if you're going to do this, you can't just fire up a code. But I mean, as a, as a matter of a menu, I get why they're doing it. You save money on printing costs and you don't have to, you know, whatever. I get it. It doesn't bother me, but it's like, man, optimize your site. Because some of them, you did, we went to, we had a friend in from out of town for business last week. And Gwen and I took him to Butcher and Brewer around the corner here. And we'd never been there before. And they had the QR code. But it's also like they've got the menu where you just tap what you want. So that was pretty, that was fine with me. I don't and care. They just and the girl just brings too. the, it's, yeah, yeah you really pay simple. right there. The food was good. I had heard kind of mixed reviews. I like their food It's a been lot. there for a minute. I, it was real good. I, Whatever I, we I got like was it. all great. So I'd go back there. But but I was just reading. They're like, restaurants are running for the door on these QR codes because people are bitching about them. I'm 100% in that camp. I, I get Why pretty am aggravated. I not surprised. I get aggravated <laughs> where I'm like, I don't want this. Just hand me a menu. Just hand me a menu. It's not that hard. I don't care if it's dirty. I don't care if it's crinkled. I don't want to be... And I will say this too, though. Well, I also go to the restaurant's website before I go. I was just going to say see. that. I do look it yeah. up. Uh, I want to know what I want yeah. before I get there mm-hmm. so I can hang out and yeah, chat and order a drink. Yeah. 
Most of the time I'll do that too, especially if I'm out of town. Like if I'm in a different city for comedy, I'll go on and look up their website before I decide to go there. But then I don't want to have to do that again. Just hand me the menu so I can remember what the name of it was. If I'm, I will take if it I'm, one step further where I will have them deliver a paper menu to my house or hotel so I can look at that ahead of time. That and seems then, labor intensive. Yes. Well, like they have a, a delivery person I come mean, over, like mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon and Quicksilver, no, just ride say, it right me, over. Bring me a paper menu. I don't want to yeah. look at your website. I don't want that. Well, it's like when somebody Googles somebody they met and they're going to go on a date with them. They want to, you know, Pound Cake talks about this. You go through their socials and whatever. That's all I'll do with the restaurants. Yeah. If I'm going to go on a date on with Yelp. you and eat your food, I'm going to do some research on you. I'm going to dig in, see what's going on. Not all the time, but at the very least, the very least I'll do is bring up the menu and go, oh, okay. That's actually- I know what direction I want to go. That's a reoccurring fight in mine and Brian's relationship is that he's, first of all, he's a vegetarian. And he drives for a living, so he can't do- Ooh, this isn't a hypothetical fight. No, no, no. This is a real this is one. A, yeah, this has moved into the world of practicality. <laughs> because I will look, f- if we're going on a date night, I will look up- a major- It's not easy to find a nice restaurant in Cleveland that has vegetarian options. Like, if you want to go to a nice dinner, you might get a pasta dish. Why don't you just Singular go to the same place dish. all the time? Well, we do that. But if we're looking, we want to go somewhere new, whatever. So I'm I'll so spend- surprised that that's the case because vegetarian Dude, options are not a new thing. It I- is so frustrating. I'm surprised by that. You'll get one pasta dish option. Or it'll be like, uh, like a, obviously you're not going to go to a steakhouse, but they'll be like, okay, you can have... Uh, three sides. Pick any three sides, right. and that's your meal. You know, mm. so the I roasted get Brussels sprouts. Yeah, it'll be roasted Brussels sprouts, like mac and cheese <laughs> and mashed potatoes. Um, <laughs> but I'll get annoyed because I'll spend time looking up a bunch of different restaurants to try to find something that has at least one or two vegetarian options. I'll send him the menu, and then we'll get to the restaurant, and he'll be like, "I don't like any of this." I'm like, "Well, I sent you the menu at 4 p.m. It's now 8:30, so you had four and a half hours to look at the menu, and you didn't." Like that drives, he does that every single restaurant we go to. Huh. It drives me absolutely insane. Where I'm like, well, you also didn't so care you're f- to pick So one. every time you guys go out to eat, you're fighting? No, not every time. Oh. It's only when he doesn't look at the menu, which is like every time. <laughs> <laughs> so again, yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's not even that we're fighting. It's like I gave you the option. I gave you plenty of time to look at the menu. And if you don't like anything, then that's your fault for not saying something. Right. See, what I love about being in a relationship is the exact opposite of Mary. I love that we both order separate things and then we can still taste each other's. Like, I'm like, ooh, I see, I wanted that. That was my second. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I was like, that was my secondary choice. That was my second choice. So, you know, give me a piece. Let me cut it. I don't want anybody to. Just don't. Order what you want. I will order what I want, but I want to taste it. Hey, can I? No. I don't want a steak. I want You should have ordered this. (laughs) He wants a nice, smooth steak, but he wants it second. Uh, Yeah, I don't don't go to places and order steak. So if he gets one, I'll have a little bit of his, but I don't want one for myself. I'm not going to finish it all. All right. Hey, I got a break here. I'll have those. Ooh, Weezer tickets for you. Weezer is coming to do, I think they're doing Blossom this summer. So if you dig Weezer, uh, they're coming out to do uh, a show June 16th, not that far off, a few Fridays away out of Blossom with Modest Mouse. Uh, so if you